Hi everybody, welcome back. We're looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 9 still, and we're on section 9.3, where we're going to be looking at the first and second person pronouns. I want to show you uh, the layout of the declension and some patterns that you'll be able to spot to help you remember them, and then just a couple of notes about how they're used. Okay, so here goes. You've done the third person pronoun already, autos, autos, auton, auto, auto, etc. And you know that's a masculine, feminine and neuter. Well, you've got the first person and second person pronouns here, which go a little bit like this. First person is me or I or us or we. And as ever, singular, plural, nominative, accusative, genitive, dative. Notice ego, eme or me, emu or mu, emoi or moi. The epsilon at the beginning is removable in some context, it's kind of sometimes with it, sometimes without it, is the plural hermes, hermas, hermon, hermin. That's the first person. Second person, su, se, su, soi, humes, humas, humon, humin. A couple of notes about remembering these. First, notice that there are some fairly obvious patterns in the first person. You've got the mu, m, 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 which is easy to remember because it's all about me when it's especially coupled with the epsilon here. So eh, the mu and the epsilon is all about me, first person. And in the plural, well, it's kind of the long e, the long uh, eta. Again, it's me, me. So that'll help you hopefully to remember that ego, emme, emu, emoi, hermes, hermas, hermon, hermin is the first person pronoun and is distinct from the second person, which we'll come to. Um, in a second. Then notice furthermore that the endings are pretty familiar in some cases, especially the genitive here. That'll be familiar. The uh, genitive plural, definitely the own ending will be no surprise to you there. Uh, one quick thought about this. It's a little bit different. It's not emo, it's ego. Notice the gamma here. Now this is a bit of a break from the pattern of the muse all the way through the rest of the declension, but it's easy enough to remember if you just think what it looks like in English. It looks like ego, which of course is my ego is, well, I don't know how much Freudian psychology you've read, but I've not read much. It's all about me, bottom line. A couple of ways in which these are used, which will help you to remember them as well. Ego is used perhaps most famously in Jesus' so-called I am sayings in John's Gospel. Ego Amy, I am the way, the truth and the life. I am the light of the world and so on. Notice here a couple of features of this pronoun. Um, ego um, being the nominative is only used for emphasis. Duff mentions this if you've got page 104, the note, um, because you notice that Amy itself means I am. The uh, I subject is included in the verb, that's very familiar to you. So this is just emphasizing I, I am. There's no other usage for that. In contrast to the other um, cases, accusative, genitive and dative, which can be used in other parts of the sentence quite freely. Let me show you an example of that. Sodze hermas, sodze hermas. Sodze from sozo, meaning I save. This is the third person singular, present indicative active. So he saves. Hermas, he saves Hermas, or where's that? Ego, emu, emoi, Hermes, Hermas, accusative, so this is the object, and it's plural. So the plural of me, when it's the object, is us. So he saves us. You get to see then how the first person pronoun is used. The second person pronoun is used in much the same way, come to some examples in a moment, but first just notice the differences in the uh, form, whereas the first person pronoun can easily be remembered because of the mu and the epsilon or the mu and the eta, which reminds us of me, me, the second person pronoun can easily remembered, easily be remembered because of the upsilon, which is a little bit like you, second person, me, you. Okay, so there's the plural, humes, humas, humon, humin, uh, again, same endings as in the first person, so you get the second person thrown in for free once you remember this. And su, se, su, soi, well, eh, u, oi, again, there is fairly straightforward. You've got to find a way of remembering 
The sigma. How do you remember that the sigma is the second person? I'll leave you to figure that out for yourself. Second person. So remembering these uh, declensions isn't really very difficult. Bounce on the trampoline, walk around in the garden, take a walk in the countryside if you want. Whatever it does, whatever helps you to clear your mind so you can get these in and walk down the street chanting Sue Sess, Sue Soy, Who Mace, Who Mass, Who Moan, Who Min. Second person, just like the first person. Now, how are they used? Well, um, the nominative is only ever used for emphasis, that is to draw attention to the subject and to highlight it's this rather than somebody else who's performing the action, just like ego. Amy, you could use it in a similar sentence. Let's take a look at a couple of other examples of how you could use the second person pronoun. Here's two sentences. Hotheos sodze se and honomos su sodze. Just take a look at those sentences for a second. Try and work out, well, the verb is fairly easy and the subject in each case is very easy. Here's the verb. Um, as he saves in both cases and both instances. <laughs> you know, that's going to confuse you. Start talking about cases. In both instances, he saves, and in the first one, well, it's hotheos, God saves, se. What's se? Well, se, su, se, it's the singular accusative second person pronoun, and it just means you. So God saves you. In this case, in this instance, I must stop saying case when I mean instance, because they can mean the same thing, but I'm going to confuse you. The law saves, what's su? Don't leap to the obvious conclusion this is not accusative it's genitive so what does that mean well back scroll back all the way to chapter three or wherever it was that you did the uh, genitive and dative cases the genitive of something means of you and this is the way in which uh the uh, in greek we express possession you remember that from the third person pronoun of you this is the law of you Onomos su, which means therefore your law, your law saves. So this is God saves you with you as the object in the accusative. God saves you. This is your law saves with you as the genitive going with the subject, expressing that it's possessed by you. Your law saves. So there's the pronouns in section 9.3. Just pause a second. I'll clear this off and then we'll look at the rest of this section. Back in a second. All right, okay, so continuing in section 9.3, we've got reflexive pronouns and possessive adjectives. We're on page 105 now, and there are a couple of tables here which are a bit puzzling, but if I talk through them with you, I'm sure they'll make a lot of sense. We've got a couple of examples right here at the bottom. So first, let's think about reflexive pronouns. Well, you know what a reflexive pronoun is, because if you turn back a couple of pages to page 103, we looked at heautos, heautos, the third person reflexive pronoun, himself or themselves in the plural. Um, and what we've got here are the first person and second person equivalents. So myself, first person, yourself, second person. And those are heautos. Sorry, em autos and se autos. Myself, em autos, yourself, se autos. A couple of notes on this. Just as with um, he autos a couple of pages back, these aren't going to occur in the nominative case just because of their meaning. Um, if you want to say, I myself did something, then you use the first person pronoun, ego. You don't use the reflexive pronoun. That's the first thought. The second is, and this is a real quirk, um, that the plural form of the first person pronoun, uh, reflexive pronoun, and the second person reflexive pronoun is the same as the plural form of the third person reflexive pronoun. So, he out toy, he out toy. Very strange, somewhat counterintuitive, but in every case where it occurs, and it's not that common, uh, the context makes it plain that it's the first person or the second person being referred to. Uh, don't worry about that right now if it's puzzling to you. As we get some examples in due course, you'll see how that works. And it's actually quite an elegant little solution. So that's the reflexive pronouns. Possessive adjectives. 
Well, you'll know already that there is a, a simple way of um, expressing possession just using the pronouns, third person as well as first and second person. I could say, uh, in, if I wanted to say your word in Greek, then I say the word of you, putting you in the genitive case. But there's another way of saying your word, just as there's another way of saying my word, and it's to use these adjectives instead. Emos, meaning my, and sos, meaning your. These are not pronouns, they're adjectives. And you use them in exactly the same way as you'd use any other adjective, an adjective like agathos. They decline just like agathos. So emos, emon, emu, emo, emoi, emus, emon, emois, and so on in the feminine and the neuter, singular and plural. Sos, son, su, soy, and so on and so forth. Uh, sos, sos, son, su, so, sorry. Soy, su, son, sois, don't get confused there. Um, they decline just like um, agathos. And you use them in the word order is just the same as agathos. So let me show you, uh, if that sounds a bit abstract and hard to get your head around, I'll show you some examples um, with the phrase my words. How would you say my words? Well, you could say hoi logoi mu, the words of me, where this is the pronoun in the genitive singular. So it's a genitive singular meaning of me. And it's the first person pronoun, so it's me, not you or him. The words of me. But there's another way of doing it. We use emos and we plonk, uh, plonk it in the sentence in exactly the same place that you'd put agathos between the article and the noun. You do need the article if you're going to use these adjectives. And you decline it just like you do with agathos. So if you wanted to say the good words, you say hoi agathoi logoi. So what do you want to, what do you do if you want to say the my words, woodenly glossed? It's hoi emoi logoi. This being in the nominative plural masculine, just like hoi and logoi. So that's the possessive adjectives. And of course, sos you use in exactly the same way. It declines in the same way. And instead of meaning my, it means your, whether singular or plural. So that takes us to the end of section 9.3. We're going to come back in the next video. We'll do a few examples just to ingrain them and get you hands on with them before we move on to look at the next section, section 9.4. And then we're heading towards the end of this chapter. Quick reminder, keep going with the vocab. Don't save all the vocab that is listed at the end of each chapter until you get to the end of the chapter. If you're working through these chapters and go through these videos, you will make it far easier and far more enjoyable for yourselves if you keep going with the vocab as you're doing each lesson. Just learn a couple of words a day or stick another couple of flashcards in your ever-growing pile every day and you'll soon get to the hang of it. So by the time you get to the end of the chapter, you've really nailed the vocab already and then you can do the exercises. Keep going 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. God bless and bye for now.